Hi everybody, we are live. It's September 19th and here I am with my iPad in front of me. I have 60 minutes today because Lauren is next at one o'clock. So I don't want to encroach on her live. We're going to try to wrap this up in one hour. So everyone, I don't know if you have uh, an iPad with you. If you don't, that's okay. You can just grab a piece of paper. We are now finishing the second week of uh, Drawing Faces with France, which is the September edition. Um, hi, everyone. I see a lot of you coming up in the, in the chat right now. This is great. Um, so we're finishing the second week, which means we're exactly at the halfway point of my September class. Uh, this week was pencil. This week, will, uh, Next week will be a little different. But in order to change things up a little, um, I decided to do Procreate for the weekend class. And we're going to keep it simple, even though I do love other brushes, like the ones uh, by Georg in Germany. Uh, you guys know about this, right? Um, today, I would like to stick to um, native brushes. We're going to go with 6B compressed charcoal and 6B pencil brushes. So why don't we open our canvases or grab our paper. It's really up to you. I split my screen already. Let me see if you can see it. Okay. It's going to be a little bit goofy. You know how it is um, with the camera. It doesn't always translate super well for the iPad, but I hope you guys can, uh, can follow along anyway. Okay. Let's see if I can get this right. All right. Can everybody see? Maybe if I can push it this way. All right. I think we got it. So, hi everyone. I, I recognize a lot of names. Um, I can't believe that you guys have such beautiful weather. It's really getting chilly here on the East Coast um, of the United States. So we're going to grab a vertical uh, canvas and I'm just going to like expand it so that it fills my screen. And why don't we go to, okay, I believe it's under uh, sorry, I take it as sketching. Okay. Under sketching, you have the 6B pencil and then under charcoal, you have the 6B compressed. And these are the two that I would like to, uh, to stick to. Okay. Uh, the canvas size settings, Henry, very good question. I use a uh, standard, uh, canvas. So just so you know, my canvas settings are basically this one uh 2048 by 2732 pixels okay this is really the standard vertical canvas that comes with procreate i don't monkey with that sometimes i use a bigger one uh, but today this is it so two 2048 oh sorry it selected it i apologize let me get rid of this i could get this under canvas information but it's easier to do it this way Okay, this is the one that we're getting today. All right. So, okay. I hope you guys are following along. Um, and I'm going to start, you know, one of the things that I like doing when I start a portrait like this is I grab the 6B compressed charcoal. And that gives me an opportunity to uh, do like the broad strokes. And then I go kind of like more into focus with the 6B pencil. So this is how we're going to do it. Okay. Okay. So why don't we do this in simply black? I want to probably uh, go back and forth between black and white eventually, like do that toggling back and forth. And right now I want to lower the opacity to about 50%. I'm at 53 actually. And um, I'm going to start. Otherwise the hour is not going to be enough to do this. So as you know, this is just to kind of set my proportions, get them right, get this, the, the face right. You know, there's going to be hair here. We're going to be super, super uh, vague at first. And then the focus comes, comes in a little later. Okay. And what I do is I give myself a layer of you know, skin tone or whatever you want to call it to work with. And by the way, everybody, those of you who are um, just logging in, 
Uh, we are in the end of week two of Drawing Faces with France. And if you want to grab any two classes right now at Sketchy, I believe right underneath this video, you will see with the code Faces with France, you can have 20% off any uh, of my classes. Oh, and by the way, I was at about 34% of width here. It's It's useful to know because you don't want this uh, charcoal to to be too big at first um, but this is uh, this is a good start I think all right so this is where I'm gonna put let me see am I right about the same okay so this is where I'm gonna put the glasses nose mouth okay roughly and all this fuzziness on either side here will go away as with the uh, 6b pencil and by the way, I'm going to set my eraser for 6B pencil as well, all the way up in width and all the way up in opacity. That's going to help us a little later. Okay. Um, sure. All right. We can do that. So perhaps, how is this, everybody? Let me know if it's okay for you to have, let me lower this little window here. Can everybody see uh, okay if I use the... Um, the reference photo right on camera. I hope it's okay. So yeah, let me know if it works for you. Okay. All right. So, um, you know what, we're going to go into the detail now already for, I put this in my favorite. So I've got my 6B pencil pushed all the way up for the width and opacity because I want to get into those glasses, everybody. So that's kind of where I want to go right now. So for that, I switch to 6B pencil, okay? I hope it looks, it, I, I hope it looks okay for everybody, okay? Sorry, I have the sniffles today. It's getting so much colder outside. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is better. Thank you, Angela. I appreciate the feedback. That's good. Okay. So um, I want to go into detail, but not too much. Right now, I just want to set my, kind of like my bearings, you know, I want to get my proportions right. You know, you get the idea, right? The shape of the glasses, they're here. Let's not make them too thick. But you see this idea of starting vague and then going into the detail. That's really how I like doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uta, thank you for your, for your input. I, I personally, um, do not use the small photo either. I use the one, obviously that's right by me. Makes a lot more sense. Oops. Here we go. The first undo gesture of the, of the session guys. Um, problem is I don't like this. Um, because I'm totally horizontal here, I already see that I'm I'm creating a little bit of a distortion and that's not good. I need to correct this. So by standing over my, my drawing like this, I have a better, you know, like a bird's eye view of what's going on. And that helps with uh, fixing distortion and things like that. Okay, let's get into a little bit of hair. Let's define things a little bit here. Not a whole lot, but just to have an idea. See, boom, like right away there you, you create hair. Okay, and there. All right, so I'm going to clean up the side here. Is everybody doing okay? Yeah? Okay. Good. Okay, I'm trying to follow your your comments as we as we go. Uh, why do we need to do to get that new version of Procreate on Monday? Um, I don't have the new version of Procreate. I have uh, whatever my iPad is allowing me to have. I have not made any any update and it's great the one I have is perfect so you see here I'm just sort of cleaning up 
whatever is on the side here with my 6B uh, eraser, I am just coming back and cleaning up so that it looks a little more like hair. You can do that also towards the end of the drawing, that's fine. But I like cleaning things up kind of early in, in the process. And then the reflection uh, in the hair, which do exist, we will bring in the eraser for this and just bring them in like this, you see. But we can do that a little later. I'm not too preoccupied with that. I just want to get my, you know, some hair right here. Hairline. Boom, boom. Mm. Okay. So guys, are you telling me that there is a Procreate update coming up that I am not aware of? That tells you that I've been really off the grid with the, uh, with the beginning of classes, teaching online, and, uh, and buying a house. <laughs> it's been a little insane. <clears throat> I got the keys to my house yesterday. And guys, it is the most daunting thing I've ever done. The thought of being tied to a financial institution like that, oof, in such a big way. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope I'm fixing the distortion that I had at first. Right now, uh, the skin tone, you, you can't even really see them because it's so bright, but all this is actually covered um, with a layer of 6B uh, charcoal compressed. Yeah, thanks. Um, oh my gosh, I have tons of suggestions to make a drawing uh, realistic, of course. Uh, so Okay, Okay. just trying to get an idea of what all the, uh, the, the comments are. Yeah, Chris, I'm only tied for three decades. You're absolutely right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm having a really hard time being happy about this. So to make a realistic portrait, you want to start not realistic and then slowly getting into the detail. And this is exactly what we're going to do here today. It's going to be fairly realistic because that's kind of my, you know, my approach to things. Um, but it's not going to show right away. So at first, it's going to look a little messy. And then we're going to build on that. Oh, look, there's a little bit of an eyebrow here. I told you earlier in the drawing that we're going to grab uh, some white. Also, you can also do that by using the eraser. That's great. Okay. And yes, I, I agree. I am probably going to finish this, but I can't guarantee anything, though it is a lot more likely to happen on the iPad because of the ease which, with which we can just, you know, juggle between tools and, and so forth. Okay, let's put these little little guys here on this side all right okay moving right along a lot of people um ask me you know do you always start at the top and then move your way down um absolutely oh and anish i'm so glad that you like that uh that tintin uh canvas yeah i told you right it comes from um um congo the democratic republic La République Démocratique du Congo, that's where it comes from. It was a gift from a friend. And I love Tintin, so... All right. Okay. Um, all right. I vaguely, I don't know if you can even see, but I vaguely started, you know, the shape of the glasses. Great. Okay. And 
and I think I'm gonna place the nostrils here. The way I do it is I try to spot, you know, where the the ball of the nose is, and I look at where it is in comparison to the eyes, to the end of, you know, the like the rims of the glasses here. It seems to be at about that distance, so boom, this is where it goes. There's nothing very scientific about the way I do things. I told you before, I'm sure there's a more academic way to measure things uh, with a ruler and everything, but uh, oh gosh, I don't know that. Yep. Oh, I did not know that, Marcel. Marcel, I wish I could hear the, the pronunciation of that. I would be incapable of saying this because I don't know. I don't know Dutch. Even though I lived for one year in Belgium, I just didn't get enough exposure, you know. And uh, Amy, I'm so glad. This is something I have to do throughout the week, you know, do the French French teaching. Because that's, uh, that's what I teach in high school. On parle français. I see that I have uh, a few French speakers here today, right? I have uh, uh, Madame Desnoyers from Montréal, Danielle, right? Yeah? Okay. All right, so uh, the name of the brush is still 6B Pencil. That has not changed. I am still in 6B Pencil here. Nothing has changed. What I used for the background, however, you know, like that initial layer Although I don't change layers, I'm still in one layer. Uh, but what I have underneath here is 6B compressed charcoal, which you can find under charcoals. Okay. All right. Let me take out some of the mess that I made here on the side. I'm not sure I like this. Okay, here we go. Going back and forth between eraser and and pencil right now. I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, uh, Natalie Merchant, but that's who I'm listening to right now. I'm having a radio playlist going on in the background. So pleasant. And yes, I teach high school. Oh, Danielle, tu as invité une amie. Hey, okay. Oh my gosh, Jody from Perth, Western Australia. It's 12.15 a.m. Sunday. Yes, okay. <laughs> Good night, Jody. I appreciate you being there even for a few minutes. That's wild. I need to do um I need to do another Australian uh live. We did one over, I think it was in June. Oh my gosh, all these all these months are starting to blend in my memory. But yeah, we had an Australian live. And that was really good. Really enjoyed doing that. It wasn't limited to people in Australia, of course, but it allowed for for people on that, you know, in that corner of the world to actually attend this, you know. And Chris, salut! Oh, I'm so glad I have uh, my Canadian French speakers today. So you see, I'm slowly defining uh, things. Like it was very blurry at first. It was messy and blurry. But that mess and that blur allowed me to determine kind of my proportions, you know, where things were. And now I'm taking out all the, uh, the excess stuff that comes from the charcoal, just taking it out on the side. And you see now we have a face that is kind of coming in focus. Unfortunately, you don't see much because of the quality of the camera, but you will see at the end. At the end, we're going to go to Sketchy Art School. We'll post what we drew. You're going to see it, it definitely looks a lot darker than it does on camera. So yes, Jody, I would love to do that. Absolutely. I will do uh, an Australian live. Yeah. Oh, I would have loved to have drawn... Um, RBG today, trust me. That would have been a great, great idea, actually. I have drawn her in the past. Oh, 
Okay, let's see. All right, so if you notice, there's a certain thickness to uh, the lens. Um, so it shows, it shows as kind of like a whitish. You see it here, guys? So here I'm going with my eraser. I could also go with the white. It would The, the result would be very much the same. But what that does is it really shows the depth of the lens. And yes, I am self-taught. I didn't go to art school. The Really, the last art class where we actually learned something was in seventh grade with Madame Emonier. I really loved that teacher. She was my um, language arts teacher. She was not an art teacher. But I loved that she made us um, copy our favorite vinyl sleeve, you know, covers. So that, that was something I loved. Yeah, Alexandra, that's something maybe we could uh, we could consider. Good, good point. So the last thing I did for any art class when I was twelve years old was uh, draw the cover of Brothers in Arms by Dire Straits. I thought I was so cool doing that. It was around that time too, like 1985, 86. I don't know if I'm doing the shape of this particular lens right, but okay. I'll fix it along the way. Okay. This goes in more. Okay. There are no eyes on my um, uh, drawing yet. So this is Richard, by the way, who, whom we are drawing. Okay, let's see. Oh, I didn't do the little bridge there yet with the glasses. Not sure if, it, if it's even called the bridge. For now, I'll do it this way. Maybe there's a better way to do it. We'll see later. Okay. Ha ha ha, you would have chosen the Beatles White Album. What a great idea. <laughs> that would have been a good uh, um, a good joke. Oh, by the way, I need to tell you guys that my cat has been playing with my Apple Pencil so much that I have bite marks in it. I don't know, well, you, you probably cannot see, but there are little teeth dents there from where she bit in it. How about that? This is one expensive toy if you don't don't mind my saying. Oof. So needless to say, now at night I keep um I keep the apple pencil of, out of her reach. I thought it was out of her reach at first, but not enough. <laughs> ah. Okay. Oh, let's establish some um highlights here, shall we? We have one here, right there on the nose, okay, and we have some shine on the forehead right here. So let's go, let's do that. It doesn't show really again when we go on sketchy art school after this um we're going to post this you're going to see that it's not as light as what you can see here <laughs> i love the fact that uh that you guys have cat issues too <laughs> that was so funny life with cats Things are not symmetrical on this face. Of course, you know, there's there's no such thing as a symmetrical face. But um, it does help to, to place things and then know that it's almost the same distance on either side. Like, for example, that little crease 
is almost at the same distance to the edge of the face on both sides. No things like that. They help me decide. Oof, I left things really vague here on the side. Let me clean this up. And keep in mind, those of you who are just joining, we are at the end of week two of uh, Drawing Faces with France. This is a September edition. And we did pencil this week. Um, things are going to be changing a little bit. We're going to uh, vary things. You're going to see pen procreate in the next few weeks. And uh, our next live, I believe, oh, I don't have it in a, in mind, but it's either pen or pencil. It will not be uh, procreate so that I don't repeat myself week after week. Um, and yeah, if you want to pick up that class right now, we have 20% off. Uh, any of my classes at Sketchy, 20% off with the code Faces with France. There you go. Uh, Amy, that's a very good question about deciding not to use a colored background. I could have, honestly, and I could still um, go ahead and put a, a colored background in the back. Um, but there's something a little, I don't know, maybe it's because it looks a little cartoony. I really like leaving a, a white background most of the time. Um, not sure why, and this is not me telling you not to, because honestly, I really think that if I had a colored background here, it would look pretty neat. So there is no rule there. So Amy, if you want to go ahead and do a colored background yourself, like something, um, like maybe a gray or even maybe like trying to replicate that yellow that's on the original um, photo, why not? I really have no rule about that. Some of my favorite things to draw on the face are noses. Oh, I forgot that there's also a little bit of a highlight here on the bridge of the nose. Look, right there, going down the nose. That's going to make things pop a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good point. Sketchy. Thank you. If you are drawing along, let's also share on Instagram with the hashtag Faces with France. And that way, uh, I will see what you did on Sketchy. So, yeah. Thanks for the reminder. Okay, let's bring the little bit of eyebrow that's here, but at the same time, let's not forget about the lens. Okay. I'm toggling back and forth here between black and white brush, which is a really nice luxury to have. Okay, I'm going to uh, make this a little thinner. Okay, my brush size now is going to be at 38%. It's going to be a really thin line, but this is just so that I have uh, a little more definition for the eyes. Okay, I'm doing the eyelids right now. Is everybody doing okay today? Yes? Gray ones. Oh, I like that, Amy. The idea of a gray, gray beige. Love that for any drawing. That's partly why when I draw on paper, I really like a toned, you know, like a moleskin, yellow-ish, beige-ish background. Paper is really the best. Okay, let's bring in the eyes. Let's try to not make Richard cross-eyed. That's always a challenge. Let me see if I'm getting this somewhat right.
again I just reduced the uh, uh, the, the width of my of my brush for this this is the first time since I started the drawing that I actually lowered that and again trying to keep track of your comments guys um, yes Annie very good question I could have started with the eyes but for me procreate is giving me a little more confidence to start with something else and therefore <clears throat> with procreate I will have a tendency to go with shape of the face first and then the rest just sort of follows and it's really because for one reason only it's because we have that safety net of being able to backtrack and um, <clears throat> do all these things that the undo button allows us to do or the erase button <clears throat> obviously when I when I draw with a pen I do not have the same luxury and therefore, I want to secure the eyes first. So, Annie, that's an excellent question. And, you know, I'm not even fully uh, conscious of doing that. But the fact that you pointed out, absolutely, it's true. It's true that had I started this in pen, I would have definitely started with the eyes and built my face around that. Yes, if you don't mind, I need to blow my nose. Okay, <laughs> it's just getting so chilly here these days. It's funny, there is symmetry in this face, but not everywhere. So for instance, in the way that the you know, the, the glasses show, it's not the same on one side or the other. It's so wild. Now I'm really going into the little details of the face. Of the eyeglasses. I love this stage of things. When you've already secured your proportions, you know, you're kind of like sailing along and it just feels right. And for those of you who are also uh, using an Apple Pencil, um, know that I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on it. Only when I go into exactly where I am right now, which is, you know, the dark black. Okay, let me check on the time. Where do I have the time on my machines? Okay, we've been, uh, we've been at this for about a half hour. Yeah. Um, and Dave, that's a good question about using the eraser function the same way as I would on paper. No, because I think here I have... I have more flexibility with the the eraser tool, meaning I can make it as thin as I want, and it's definitely easier to use than the kind of eraser, even if it's an eraser that is thin, you know, I have those kinds too. Um, it is definitely a lot easier to use thin and thick erasers on um, on Procreate. Like, look, I'm about to use the eraser to add that little bit of shine, you know, in, in those eyes. You see right there, also here, there's, for some reason, a little bit coming in. And I'm going to add one here. That alone would be kind of difficult to achieve with a pencil and the eraser because it would be just, you know, obviously the marks made with the pencil would be much harder to, to take out. But yeah. Um, good question, Amy. Do I alter the um, the brush settings? Not at all. I did that on purpose today. I have some altered brushes here and there. Okay, don't get me wrong. But mostly, I I stick with the the basics 
partly because I do these, you know, these classes and I don't want you to have to worry about changing any setting. So I keep the native settings and I stick to that. And basically that's, um, that's it. And that's really good for me too. So no alteration of brush here whatsoever. It's the native thing all along. Default setting. Okay. I went back to setting my, uh, my 6B pencil at the maximum width. So now it's all a matter of pressure if I add pressure, it's going to be thick and no pressure, it's going to be much thinner. You see, and, and this is the same setting, but if you play around with it, you, you're going to notice that you can really do interesting things with, um, okay, Richard, I'm sorry. I just put a barcode on your forehead. Let's take it off. Okay. Shall we? Tap of, a, of two fingers and boom. Okay. Yay, thank you, Richard. I'm so glad. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I really appreciate that. That's so great. This is such a great uh, reference photo. Really cool expression you've got on your face there. Okay. Whenever I do shadows, like the one I'm doing right now, I go very lightly and I go uh, several times over it. That helps. But then if it is too dark, which right now I think it is, a little bit of eraser over it will just lighten it up to the way I want it, which hopefully is like this, okay? Maybe I'll get back to it, but right now I like it this way. Okay. I'm darkening this whole area now. You see why, right? It's much darker inside the, the lenses of the glasses. And to do that, I kind of use the side of my, um, of my Apple Pencil nib. You know, not the tip, but more like the side, and that allows me to make a, a broader stroke. And of course, my cross-hatching uh, habits and reflexes are never too far away. You know, whenever I want to fill in a little portion, like here and there, I revert to you know, just a little bit like that. It's not an obligation, but it does allow you to control what you're doing a little bit more. See that boom right there. Mm, too close. Is everybody doing okay? Yes, with um, Procreate or not. Okay. So this is an excellent question about pace. Um, my drawing faces with uh, France, those, those classes are definitely more like this, where we do either three or two drawings a week and then a Saturday session live together. And that's really it. And, and if you can't draw on Monday, you can just do it later in the week. You can really go at your own pace 
um, you don't have to go exactly at the same same speed as I I do. So I think um, if you take a look at the classes I teach at Sketchy, um, drawing with France, drawing faces with France, that's uh, that's where that's where you're going to find I think a, a more comfortable pace like this. Um, drawing every day can be a little daunting. I get it. And uh, yes, Fiona, my eraser is set to 6B. Same. Yeah. Ooh, okay, good. Shelly, that would be a great idea. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm so glad that you guys are feeling good about what you're drawing. You should. One of the things I love the most about drawing a portrait with glasses is that you're going to end up with um, reflections and shadows cast by the rims of the glasses, and this is exactly where I am right now. There's also a big one happening here. You know what? Let's do it. So it goes down the eyelid right there, and then the cheek. And it's pretty big, look at that. I love these details. They make things look pretty realistic. And it sticks out on this side here. I love that. I'm trying to find its equivalent on the other side. It's not as obvious. Over a little bit here, yeah. Here I am now, going rather dark in this in these corners that I thought were already dark as they were, but going even darker. Okay. Okay. I agree, Angela. Establishing that regimen, as you say, is, is everything. I think that's really something that comes with um, the, this whole concept of uh, drawing faces with France is, yeah, I'm drawing in a certain medium, but what matters is that you draw in yours, whether it's different or it's the same, but you are establishing a habit and you are really um, making time for drawing in your in your busy life, right? Okay. And right after this session, we have Lauren, uh, who is going to have a watercolor um, session for you. And I am going to make sure that I get out of the way quickly so that nothing encroaches on her session. That's really important. I love what Lauren does with watercolor. You should stick around and watch her live. And she has an excellent spirit, too. If you haven't attended any of her, of her uh, sessions, you should. It's really fun. It's coming right up at 1 o'clock, right after this. Okay, I haven't really worried about his, uh, his mouth yet. Richard's mouth is non-existent yet. Hold on, it's coming up. We'll get there. Just making some marks to bring in some of that sketchiness, bringing a darker side here, using the side of the um, of the Apple Pencil is great for that. It allows you to make broader strokes. You see, like you can really make, it's not super broad, but 
it's less defined than something like this, you know, and that's really great to be able to do. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And that just adds a little bit of, uh, of volume to this forehead, right? It was a little flat before, to tell you the truth. And I love this nose too, absolutely love it. It's pretty dark right there, so I'm gonna make that reflection look hopefully realistic there. And that shadow, realistic, that's what I'm talking about. Right there. Is everybody doing okay? Yes, yes. Yes, Dave, if you look, um, the shadows themselves, I try to draw a little bit of an outline first, like here, you see. And then filling in, boom. There's not much to it. We're going to have another darker spot right there. Okay. There's also a big uh, shadow being cast here from, I think, the lens of the glass. The glasses. Trying to keep track of your comments and question. Yes, um, we are going to have this on uh, Drawing with France, the group, on Sketchy Art School. It's free to join. You're going to see the reference photo and you are going to see our drawings. So we're all going to post after this. And you'll see, guys, that what you see on your screen right now and what's happening on mine um, are very much two different things because what I see is very faded compared to what I have on my screen. I think uh, the camera is, you know, the best the best friend here of, um, you know, the Procreate and the Apple iPad screen. I love the reflection and the casting of shadows from these glasses. It's gorgeous. There you go. It's pretty cool.
And right now the width of my brush is still max, and so is the opacity, so that has not changed. I only changed it a little bit to go into the details of uh, the eyelids, but I came right back to pushing both all the way up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, coming right up. Facial hair is next. We're going to have to worry about the, the hair. So what I do for facial hair is suggesting a few. Just like that. Let me make sure that I've got my nose correct, okay. And for facial hair, stay stay vague. You don't have to tell the whole story. Just give the ones that help determine that, oh yeah, there's facial hair here, fine. You don't have to be too explicit about them. Like here, you know, on the edge of uh, Richard's face, you can just suggest that little bit of stubble. And then boom, same here. And then you'll see when I, when I come back, we'll add a little bit of um, depth to all this. Okay, lightening things up here and here. I'm really going to try to finish this within the time that I have. Hey, yeah, I've about seven minutes left, eight minutes. Okay. There's that shadow in the mouth. And right underneath this shadow, we're going to bring in some white and lighten up right a little bit there. A little bit here. Bringing back the black. Okay, I'm going to lower the width of this a little bit just to make that facial hair appear. There we go. I'm rushing right now because I want to finish. And I don't want to give you something that's... Uh, you know, 75% done. Let me get rid of all this charcoal that I had right there. Definitely speeding up the process here. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, we we might be ninety five percent done, but at least it won't be it won't be three quarters. It will be more than that. Is everybody doing okay with the with the pace? Okay. All right. Let's keep going until the end. And then I'll really sign off at one because I don't uh, I don't want you to to feel compelled to stay here when we have uh, Lauren at one o'clock with her watercolor session, which should be a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going back to full width here on the brush. Let me see, we have about four minutes left. All right, all right, all right. Let me just add a little bit of dark where this stubble is. Right there too. And then bring in actual facial hair with just quick little you know strokes like that little hatches Bring back some white brush here. Okay, guys, I'm gonna have to end very soon. I think we are just about done. I'm going to post it as is to show you really what it is that I can do in in 60 minutes because really that's that's exactly what this is adding a little more detail right here and here and there's a little more to do with this uh you know the shine on the lips here you can just put a little this way and that basically is Richard. I didn't take the time to do the color of his shirt. Didn't even take the time to really add the little bit of shine in his hair like this. Right here, a mix of broad strokes and thin strokes for the hair. To show a little shine, bringing back a little bit of, you know, dark all the way up to it. Boom. Okay. All right, everybody. I have to go. Lauren is next. It is about one o'clock. So thank you, everybody, for being here. I am off to Sketchy Art School to post my drawing and to see yours. So I hope you post yours as well. And uh, don't hesitate to pick up two of my classes for 20% off with the code uh, Faces with France at Sketchy Shop. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go, everyone. So let's meet at Sketchy Art School. Let's see what we've done today. And I'll see you next week, which is gonna be the end of my third week of uh, drawing faces, faces with France. Bye, everyone. I'll see you next week. Uh, Monday, we're doing a new drawing. Wednesday also, and next Saturday. Bye, everyone. Thanks for being here today. 
Ciao and meet you at Lauren's session. <laughs>